Welcome to section 13.13a. All right, gentle people, in this lecture, what we're going to be talking about is VSEPR theory, and that is the valence shell electron pair repulsion theory. So the idea here is we've already talked about drawing Lewis dot structures, but Lewis dot structures is a limited idea. It is a model that chemists have developed to express qualities about a molecule. The idea behind Lewis dot structures is we are telling you who is connected to who, how many bonds that they share, and the location of the lone pair electron. Lewis dot structures are a 2D representation of our molecule conveying this information. However, we know molecules are just like us. They exist in three-dimensional space. What we are going to explore in this lecture is Vesper theory. Vesper theory is the interpretation of the molecule in three-dimensional space. Unlike Lewis structures, Vesper seeks to go ahead and tell me the bond angles and the molecular shape of my molecule. Now to use Vesper theory, we have to go ahead and determine the Lewis dot structure of our molecule. Vesper theory goes ahead and goes further than Lewis dot structures. So why don't you guys go ahead and do me a favor and draw out the structure of methane. Now you guys saw me draw this structure in our last lecture. What you guys saw is me draw the Lewis dot structure of methane with the carbon in the middle, the four hydrogens spread evenly about. Occasionally when I ask students to go ahead and draw this picture, I get that special student that kind of draws this picture right here. Now here's the idea behind Lewis dot structure both of these structures are completely valid. Because again, Lewis dot structure doesn't tell you bond angles, nor does it tell you molecular shape. It's just telling you who is connected to who and lone pairs and bonds. And both of these pictures convey the same idea. I have a carbon in the center, it's singly bonded to four other hydrogens, and there's no lone pairs. Now here's the problem that we run into. Some people see this picture and they assume that the picture is implying that, that the angle of the hydrogen carbon hydrogen, so this angle right here, that equals 90 degrees. And we can see people's reasoning behind that. Nature tends to like symmetry. This is a symmetrical representation of the molecule. However, what it doesn't take into account is that this molecule exists in three-dimensional space. And our atoms don't have to be in the same plane. This constriction of the Lewis dot structures is be because I draw Lewis dot structure on flat surfaces like paper, whiteboards, blackboards, and on your computer screen. However, if we want to make use of three-dimensional space, we can draw a symmetric molecule. And the idea here goes to Vesper theory. What you'll notice is in Vesper, we have something called electron pair repulsion. So the idea here is that these bonds are made out of electrons. Electrons are negatively charged. So what I want to do is I want to have all these electron pairs, all these bonds, as far away from each other as possible. That's the crux of Vesper theory. However, what we have to understand is because it exists in three-dimensional space, I have to use all the dimensions available to me. And so 90 degrees works in two-dimensional space, but in three-dimensional space, what's going to happen is I'm going to adopt a structure called the tetrahedral. And in this configuration, the hydrogens are not 90 degrees apart from each other, and they are not in the same plane. All right, gentle people, to give you an idea of what this looks like in three-dimensional space, let's actually build a three-dimensional model. So what you guys see here is a tetrahedral. Now, what I want you guys to note is these guys right here 
These are the bonds. They're represented by these white sticks. And remember, those are made out of electrons. So I want to try to spread those four white sticks as far away from each other as possible. And what that adopts is this structure right here. Now what I want you guys to notice is that I've symmetrically spaced these things apart. There is no top, there is no bottom. I can turn this molecule any which way and it looks the same. Now another thing you will notice is that this molecule isn't in one plane. What you guys will see is I have a hydrogen that is going towards you and I have a hydrogen that is going away from you. If I wanted to represent a plane, I can use this pink sheet of paper. And what you guys will see is that only three of the atoms would fall under the same plane. That hydrogen up on top, that hydrogen that's pointed to the left, and then that carbon in the center represented by that black sphere. So in organic chemistry, you guys are gonna go ahead and draw a lot of things in three-dimensional space. So I'm gonna give you guys kind of a crash course on how to represent molecules. So in our methane molecule, we had a carbon, we had a hydrogen in the same plane, and we had another hydrogen that was in the same plane. Whenever you use a single line, that represents in the same plane. Now we had one hydrogen, that was going towards us. So it was coming out of the page. To represent out of the page, we're going to use a wedge. And so this hydrogen right here is coming out towards us. Now the hydrogen that is going backwards or into the page, we're gonna go ahead and use a dashed wedge. And so this is how we represent something in three dimensions when we draw it on something like a piece of paper, a blackboard, or on our screen. All right, gentle people. Now I mentioned that the angle is not 90 degrees, and it turns out if you look at the angles on a tetrahedral, the angle that you'll find in methane, that is the hydrogen-carbon-hydrogen -hydrogen angle, is 109.5 degrees. Now, because it's symmetrical, this is the angle of every hydrogen carbon hydrogen. Now, with this idea, let's go ahead and do this quiz question. Go ahead and draw ammonia out for me, NH3, and tell me, do you expect the hydrogen-nitrogen-hydrogen bond to be 109.5? All right, gentle people, before we use our Vesper ideas, we first have to draw Lewis dot structures. So for methane, I showed you guys we have four bonds. Each of these bonds have electrons in them. I wanna space these four things as far away from each other as possible. So let's go ahead and draw the Lewis dot structure of NH3. Now what you will see around the nitrogen is you see four things. One, two, three, and four being our lone pair. Now you would think it has four things of electrons and they want to get away from each other as much as possible. And so you would think that this angle is going to be the same as in methane, 109.5. But if we look closely, one of those electron pairs is different. What I have here is a lone pair of electrons. And this is going to change the shape of my molecule. It turns out when we measure the hydrogen-nitrogen-hydrogen -hydrogen angle, it turns out to be less than 109.5. So let's go ahead and explain why this is the case. When I have things in a bond, what you will notice is I'm fixing the electrons on both ends. So if this was my carbon and this is my hydrogen, they're in a bond, and what happens is I confine my bonding electron between two points. However, if I have a lone pair, I only have one anchor point. I don't have another thing pinning the electrons. So what happens with a lone pair is it sweeps out a lot more area. 
a lone pair electron takes up more space than a bonding pair of electrons. So what happens because this lone pair is sweeping out more space, it is going to push all my bonding electrons together. And so what happens is the angle between the hydrogen, nitrogen, hydrogen becomes less than 109.5. If I were to go to water, what you guys would notice is I have one, two, three, four groups of electrons around my central atom. But because I have these lone pairs, these are greedy when it comes to space and they will push the bonding pair of electrons closer together. So I get an even smaller angle than 107. I go all the way down to 104.5. So the idea here is that lone pair electrons are going to take up more space and they're going to squish bonded pair electrons closer together. All right, gentle people, to give you guys an idea, what we have here is we have our methane. Again, we have four bonds. And in this case, we have our ammonia. And what I've done is I've represented our lone pair as this paddle. So you can see that the paddle is taking up more space than these bonds. These bonds have our electrons confined nice and tightly, where our paddle represents the lone pair which is going to make sure we sweep out more area. So the idea here is this top guy right here, he's going to take up more space, and that's going to go ahead and push all these other bonded electrons closer together. And so if it's pushing this, what you guys will see is that angle is going to sharpen up. It's going to be less than 109.5. Now that's going to be true for all the angles in this molecule. All right, gentle people, I hope that made sense and remember to stay safe.